In a world where you need audio heroes, several nerds will come together to fight for nerd kind. It's time for nerds to step up and unite. It's time for Crisis on Infinite Podcast. What are the words of that song? That's the words. That's a little extra right there. Yeah, it's yeah. scooby What if that's porn music in the Star Wars world? Like, what's the they play for doing porn? Wait, Ooh. what? Whoa, Kevin. Whoa. Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be awkward? You Like, making love music? Oh, wow. Making... <laughs> hey, baby, I'm going to lay you down. See, <laughs> so that one, So if you didn't know what that... <laughs> well, no, remember a couple of episodes ago on the podcast, we actually talked about how that song, the Cantina Band song, is one of the most popular sex songs oh, yeah, we in did Australia. Yeah, you're right, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that was Figurin Don in the Model Nodes, aka the Cantina Band from Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. You're probably wondering why are we singing that? Because it's freaking May Fourth. May the Fourth be with you. Ha ha! You the first one to make the joke, and, and you, you got, got to buy the drinks. drinks. It was a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. So many Star Wars references. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I fell right in it. Too. So you, we'll <laughs> like explain. A like that. Oh man! So we'll explain <laughs> everything we're referencing. But it is the 28th episode. My name's Hoodie. I'm Kevin. And I'm Javi. And you'll see, once again, I said the 20th episode, a.k.a. the Star Wars Spectacular episode of Crisis, Crisis on Infinite, Infinite Podcast. Podcast. Ooh, we did it. Ooh, we, we, man, we made it to Star Wars Day, boys. We yeah. doing big things. That's like yeah. half a year. 28? That is half a year. This is our half a year podcast, guys. Oh, 52. Oh, I guess you're right, yeah. Well, I thought there was 56 weeks, but. I'm dumb. I'm a dumb. I had an extra month, I guess. Hold on. I'm doing math. It, d- no, it, 12 it, it times 4. That's 24. It, it would have been 26 for 52. 26. But 26 would have been the halfway oh. mark. But. Well, hey, we made it halfway. Well, so. <laughs> Quiet with your sorcery, Javi. Yes, no one likes it. Uh, well, I, I'm just saying, my metachlorian height and all, my, your, like, my metachlorian Your count. black magic. <laughs> so, as you can see with all our references, today is Star Wars Day, which is May the 4th. We'll explain that, what that is a little bit. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. But we're going to tease you with a little bit of the menu. So what you can get here at, at infinite underscore pods, Ooh. where you can follow us. Actually, we did a little adventure there, so you should definitely check that out on Instagram, YouTube, and actually Twitter as well. But today we're talking about Star Wars Day, obviously. I love Star Wars Day. That'll probably be about like 40 minutes. We'll talk about Dark Tower, the movie, and that'll be Javi's little special because he knows a little bit more about it than we do because he's reading the books. I am. And then we're going to talk about American Gods, movie memorabilia, Marvel, and the Defenders, and everything good in it is with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. One of us saw it. Guess who did? I wonder if it's the one who saw it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, obviously, we're going to talk about our favorite thing, our DC check-in, which we're about to check. Don't We almost checked it, because I said almost it. Did. <laughs> almost <laughs> did. I heard check-in. I heard check-in. It's a premiere. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is, obviously, we made blue milk today. Yeah. Which is great. So, Blue Milk, if you didn't know, is sort of like the Star Wars beverage of choice in the Star Wars universe. It helps you build strong bones. In the first movie, Aunt Beru, which is Luke's aunt, makes it. Luke, and it's, Luke. it's essentially food dyed milk. And they drink it throughout the whole universe. It tastes like a warm milkshake right now. Oh. And throughout the episode, Javi and I have a running bet that <laughs> we're going to do a what are the odds at the end of the episode. We'll post it at infinite underscore pods on Twitter yep. using the hashtag crisis crew. So you can join the conversation and see how nasty he is. We left and we made four <laughs> cups and there's three of us. The fourth cup is just sitting out now under the lights of the studio. Yeah. And so the, the loser right of this bet is going to have to chug it. So yeah. that, that's going to be delicious. Yo, yum, yum, yum. Cannot wait. But first thing I want to get to is because it's this week. Actually, it's technically tonight. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yes. It technically comes out tonight at like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Seven, eight, All whatever. movies now have that. Do you guys like that or no? Yes. I, I don't. Well, I see, I like it because it like allows me, if I want to like go see it with my brother, I don't have to like keep him up till, uh, till midnight. And so like he's late for school or if I got to get up early, I ain't got to be a struggle. I could see it like at 9 and then call it a day. I missed the, the traditional just the Friday release. It came out on Friday, not 12 or 1 Thursday night. Came out on Friday. Even something to look forward to. And that was like Thursday, just another day. I got to work tomorrow. True. You know, I, I don't want to be up late. But I think the hype is still the same for the most part. Oh, hype's still the same, definitely, yeah. yeah. Hype's mm-hmm. definitely still the same. Yeah. You know, Kevin 
Got a little surprise. Like we said last week, if you didn't listen, got a little surprise. Yeah. Got a little sneaky. And then the rest of us are seeing like normal people on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. I know what happens, people. <laughs> I can ruin your whole but, weekend. Javi, you're, you're seeing it this weekend, right? Yeah. When are you seeing it? I'm seeing it Saturday. I'm seeing it tomorrow after work. I'm leaving. Instead of seeing, <laughs> that's how I'm celebrating Cinco de Mayo. Yo! So I go seeing Guardians at the Alamo Draft House. Oh. Stay classy, Alamo Draft House, right there. <laughs> Alamo Draft House is sick, though. For real? Mm hmm. I want to check it out one day. You keep saying it's really good. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll go for um, Star Wars Episode 9 or 7, 8. I don't know. 8, 8, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm confused. It's a Star Wars marathon, and it's confusing me with the numbers because now we're. The- update We're currently on Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, where they try to attack the Separatist. Republic, the Separatist Command ship that has General Grievous in it. It's where the Ooh. fun begins. Yes, we'll check in with the, the rest of the movie <laughs> as the podcast continues. But, Kevin, <laughs> let me know. Was Guard- so, tell us about what you had with Guardians, your experience this week. First of all, uh, I forgot how amazing Guardians looks visually. Just in general, just not even talking about the content. And did you see it early? Or? Yeah, I saw it on Tuesday. <gasps> what? What? I saw it on Tuesday in downtown Silver Spring. Shout out. The downtown Silver Spring. The, the area you don't know if it's a Regal or an AMC, do you? <laughs> it's, I know what it is. I want to say it's a Regal. Ten points. It is a Regal. Yeah, hey, it, ten me. points for the... I was going to say Kevin's last name. <laughs> for Kevin. Ten <laughs> points for the white guy. Um, but yeah, I, downtown Silver Spring is actually just really really cool to walk around, honestly. But yeah, I saw it on Tuesday, but I forgot how visually amazing the, the, the world of the Guardians actually looks compared to the rest of the Marvel movies that all take place on Earth, pretty much. We all know what Earth looks like. But the Guardians are in the rest of the galaxy, and it's not good. Oh, I, chug, oh, I just chugged my balloon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be getting pumped for that other glass of blue milk. I just chugged my blue milk, and it wasn't good. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, we wasted 20 bucks on that. <laughs> <laughs> we go to, um, they go to a couple other planets in this movie, and they all look really, really good. And even, like, the, the, the spaceships and everything, they look really, really, really cool. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the movie goes, it was good. It was really good. It's a... On a scale of one to ten, it's an eight point eight. It's a nine. It's an amazing movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm hyped now. It may be the best Marvel movie so far, in my, in my opinion. Wow, hot take, hot take, right yeah. here first. Actually, I, I want to know that. What is, I guess, before Guardians? Now, what is your favorite Marvel movie? My favorite is the first Avengers, the my, very first Avengers. Mine is the first Guardians of the Galaxy. It was on FX last night. I was like, oh, I was about to go to bed early, but then it was on. I was like. <laughs> Well, crap! It's eleven o'clock. I need to go to bed super now. <laughs> Joey, what's your favorite er, favorite one? Uh, I'd probably say Civil War. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go Winter Soldier because I mean I uh, love that's Civil the one, War. That's sort of the that's Renaissance one. one that made all of them like boom. That boom, really boom. stepped it yep. up. So yep. Winter Soldier's great. Yep. Um, now to review it, well, further I get any spoilers. Yes, don't do any spoilers. Some of us are seeing it in like 24, 24 hours. hours. Right. The theme of the family of the movie is family. Like the Fast and Furious, not yes and no, but the, it has a, a deep seated family theme in the movie, which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I'll say about it is the bad guy isn't who you think. Ooh, <gasps> so I'll say about. So literally, it. he spoiled it to you know our our correspondent Eric. <laughs> we well, he made me though. And I was like, hey, no, do not say that. He said, get in here, shut the door. I had, to put, I had to put headphones on. Really? <laughs> Literal headphones. <laughs> and I listened to some weird, weird song while they were doing it. it he, was, he was dancing around, too. It was, it was pretty great. I should have recorded it. Mm. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, so how many post-credit scenes? That's You can tell us how many post-credit scenes there are. It was five. Only mm-hmm. only two have a connection with the movie. The third three are just kind of comedy. Okay, good, yeah. good. So like we said. So like we said. Like, like, we the, said. Cri- like the crisis predicts. Yep, it's there just we go. like that. There we go. Um, but well, yeah, one of you is going to see it. Let us know. Use the hashtag Crisis Crew. Hey, maybe we'll end up at the same theater if you're in the area with us. Oh, and so. Stan Lee has an awesome role in it. Actually. Oh, yeah, Stan Lee's in it too. And Good. if you if you follow the Marvel comics closely and know who the cast pulled this part, yeah. What what about it? Are you trying to spoil, bud? Mouth it to me real quick. The Watchers. Yeah. What's that? Okay, you don't know what it is. Okay. No. <laughs> if you well. Crisis Crew, if you know who the Watchers are, keep keep, keep a keen eye out in this movie. You might you might see a reference of them. Yondu, who is played by Michael Rooker, he, he he's a part of the Ravagers. The I Ravagers, yeah. yes. 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 I caught the back half of Guardians, so I was like, <laughs> I think you're the Ravagers. I don't. And know. also, um, Sebastian Stallone is in it too, and he actually has a really cool role. Is is John C. Riley back in it? No, he's not. Oh man. They show the planet, but they don't show anybody in the Nova Corps. They don't show Glenn Glenn Close oh. either. No. From the closer. No. So yeah, so if you didn't watch Guardians. Go watch it because it's one of the best Marvel movies out there. Yeah. Chris Pratt, my man. 
Actually, I, I just watched Parks and Rec. I was like, oh, I wonder if Garden is it was on. So it was great. <laughs> um, but they are sort of not human. I guess they're human, technically humans, on a planet that they are sort of the police, the military yeah. force for it, and they're sort of the head of it, like this galactic police department almost. And, and in, in the comic books, there is a, there is a, um, a Nova. A Nova, Nova. I think it's called Nova Prime, something like that. But anyway, he puts on a special helmet and he has powers, but yeah. he's not in the movie either, though. I but, he would be, but he's not. And so they provide a lot of, like, the inside comedy, like, uh, like John C. Riley. Like, you never see him in a serious role. It's John C. Riley. Right. He was kind of serious in um movie with Drew, with Drew Barrymore. What was it called? When she went back to high school? Uh, undercover. Undercover. Undercover brother? Yeah. You know, no, that is not That is Drew not the right movie at all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Dang, what was that movie called? Which, I mean, it's, which, it's like you have Google or something, Kevin. I know, right? My phone's locked. Hold on. <laughs> never been kissed. Never been kissed. That's what it was called. Oh, I've never seen that movie. One yeah. of the, I've never seen Never just, Been Kissed. And I've never been kissed. Oh, just kidding. Oh, it's just wow. a, it's just a sad two thousand <laughs> romantic comedy. That's all. Kind of the thing. She's all that and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Oh, so. she's all that. Mm. Now, you would 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 you recommend someone to see it? See this movie. If not, you're stupid. <laughs> oh. And do you do you need to see the first one to see it? Some people no, haven't seen the first they, one. They, they they kind of still reestablish who everybody is in the first scene of this movie. Mm-hmm. So you don't really need to see the first one, but See the first one because if you don't, like I said, you need to see them first. One. Mm. And is Vin, Vin Diesel? Is, does he voice his Groot? And then they this voice, one, he voices Baby Groot, but they um they re image his voice. Oh, okay, much. so instead yeah. of making it super deep, yeah, instead of going, oh, I am Groot. He goes, I, I am Groot. Groot. I am Groot. Like, is is Groot just as good as I'm hoping? He is a toddler. Oh, so there you go. You take, take 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 that as you will. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. He's a two year old, pretty much. So it was, it was, but please see the movie this weekend because you 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 is. Two and a half hours where I really enjoyed myself. My only question is, I told Hoodie about this on um Wednesday morning after I saw it. I want to know from you guys, should they have been taking this thing a little bit seriously, more seriously in this movie? Because what this guy's trying to do in the movie is pretty horrible. And I felt like it was a little too much uh, joking around. Just let me know what you think. Because mm-hmm. I want to know if I'm taking it let too- Let me know what you think. Yeah. Am I, am I nitpicking too much or should they have been a little bit more serious about it? That's all I want to know. We'll find out when we get to that. But speaking of Guardians, if you didn't know, I think we did we talk about this last week briefly? The the chips? Did we not? Briefly. Yes, we did. Briefly. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. All right. So last week we talked about how Guardians of the Galaxy has this movie tie in with Doritos. Ooh, the lightsaber fight, fight now. Sorry. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ping pong podcast. <laughs> just put a movie in front of us. We're distracted. Uh, last week we talked about how Guardians was giving out Doritos bags that had an actual uh, MP3 player in it. And guess who got it, guys? Of course. This one. <laughs> hey. how, peer, peer, peer. But really, how how are the chips, though? Well, it hasn't come in the mail yet. Ah. <laughs> so I bought it. Literally, it came out on Friday. The thing was, Doritos in Marvel, sort of, I'm going to blame Doritos more on this one, didn't reveal when it was actually coming out until the moment it dropped. So, and it didn't. So I had uh, Amazon and Twitter up the whole day, went to work, came home, and I forgot about it. And I checked in at like 6 p.m. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., no update. 7 p.m., it's like, the chips are online. Oh, go, 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 go. So I bought it. I got it. It was 25 bucks. 25 Yeah. Those better be some really good, be real good chips. chips. I've seen someone unbox it. Um, and there's just, It's probably like a snack size bag in it, but the rest is the MP3 player. And it comes in an actual cool box, you know, and, it gets some, and you get free headphones. So there you go. Okay. But... It's, that's an expensive movie memorabilia. Yeah. Are you eating the chips or are you going to keep it? I'm not opening the bag at all. Yeah, I don't. What? Yeah. Okay. So we need to talk about these chips that need to be eaten. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not bringing them into the studio. <laughs> what flavor are these chips? They are nacho cheese and they're nacho chips. I get it. I get it. <laughs> nacho cheesy chips. That's what it is. Oh. Uh, but I want to talk to you guys about expensive movie memorabilia or like promotional material that you guys have gotten. What is something. Promotional wise, you've gotten that you either have still or you thought was way too expensive. I still have the Iron Man arc reactor in my car that I wear every month. And where where did you get it? It was on. So here's the thing: they sold it at Target for probably like nine bucks. Mm. I got it from Fye for twenty. Ooh, yeah, the so. better one, mm. right? <laughs> no, it was the same one. Oh. <laughs> it was just marked up. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and memorabilia isn't ne- in this scenario. Isn't just a toy or a, a you know a tie-in print hero. It's something that. You know, like a brand put their name on, and then boom, there you go. Oh, and I did have a oh. pair. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't pay for these, but I used to wear them all the time. When the Wii came, when um Super Smash Brothers came out on Super Smash on the on the Wii, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I worked at Best Buy at the time, and they, they sent out like you know like 
battle gear type of stuff to every store. Mm-hmm. So I had a pair of cut a pair. You had a P? I had a P. <laughs> I, had a, I had a pair of cut off Wii sports gloves. Oh. Fingerless. Yeah, fingerless that's, gloves. Yeah. That's, that's for, for the great. bowling. And um that's and um pretty great. and we like eye black tape. Pretty much. What? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Have you opened them or? No, I actually, I, actually I'm finding a picture right now on my Facebook. I'll put it on um on Twitter later so you can see how yes. ridiculous I look. Please do that. <laughs> <laughs> Javi, anything for you? Uh, I think. Well, I don't know if you can. I don't know if it's considered memorabilia, but for uh like the Avengers when it came out on DVD, mm, the first one. Yeah, the first mm. one. Marvel sent out like the the head of the cinematic Phase One box set. Oh, you have that? Yeah, I have it. Oh, on, that's like 150 bucks. Well, it's well going on Amazon right now. It's 600 something dollars. Wow. You I need to bring it, that in. I bought it for. I want to yeah, see that. It had it has all the uh, the extra like cool material. Do you, still, do you still have all the stuff with it? Yeah, I have anything? all the stuff, and I have the Tesseract too. And mm. I'm about to actually buy the uh, Phase Two Orb. So and man, it has all. The- <laughs> man, we're always like, oh, Javi can't go out. Oh, Javi can't do anything. <laughs> oh, Javi can't. J- Javi can't go on this trip with us because too much money. Want to know what job he spent his money on? <laughs> Super big butt the collections. <laughs> I can't go. All of a I'm sudden, Javi can stay in L.A. a little bit longer than everyone else. We're like, oh, okay, cool. The one, and I think it's the one factor that separates Javi from Kevin and I. There's no ladies. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is, that is ladies. absolutely correct. Hello, ladies, a.k.a. Elvis Duran right there. If you're looking for a young, strong man. A young man who has a, a nerd. has a goatee. Hello. And he, Hello. He has a very core. deep voice. He could sing Barry White and Sweet Sweet Nothings to you into the night. Or the Cantina song. <laughs> He'll write oh, you poetry. Javi, give him a little sample of that Cantina song. Wow, good for you. I'm proud. Of, I didn't even know. I thought you were actually going to sing it high, but that's okay. Good for you. <laughs> so, Javi, in that in that phase, I didn't even know that, but the phase one that has every movie. It has, including uh, the Hulk movie. Yep, it or has Incredible the, Hulk. I think the, it is the Incredible Hulk, Thor, Iron Man one and two. The is Avengers, it the one that came in the uh, in, briefcase in the briefcase for the Tesseract? And it okay, comes with a Tesseract. Yep, and it comes with the Tesseract. Wow. Yeah, and it, it has a couple of extra. Because cool there was files. one that came out too that it was it was a hell it was a helicarrier also. Oh, I don't have that one, okay. but I have the uh, the shield mm-hmm. kind of uh, briefcase. Nice, dude. Yeah. So mine is not expensive. Well, the chips is a little bit expensive, but I've got my like movie memorabilia or movie tie-ins from like my family or other people. Mm-hmm. So in the studio, I've had this Yoda like sort of what is it, Magic Eight Ball? Yeah. So, like, Yoda Magic Sip Ball from Magic Force Ball. Force Ball. Uh, that sounds weird. <laughs> uh, but it's from the very first. Uh, well, not very first. But it's from Episode One, Phantom Menace, which. Uh-huh. Isn't on right now on TV anymore. That's okay, but this is actual the 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 puppet Yoda they used in Phantom Menace back in '99. Oh, and so I still have it, almost 20 years after. Wow. This. Do you ask it questions like on the I do, on but the the, the water evaporated out of it. That's how long <laughs> I've had it. So. Science, <laughs> science. Yes, we use evaporation. Also, new memorabilia that I found in my house is this replica, sort of lightsaber. It's like a fourth scale replica or an eighth scale. Mm-hmm. I didn't really look at the number. Probably should have. Wait. Actually, it has a description. Idiot. <laughs> it is a, it's one-eighth scale lightsaber, but it's kind of cool. It fits right in the hand. It's like, I got a lightsaber. But it's Anakin's sky lightsaber, which is technically Luke's sky lightsaber, which is technically who's lightsaber, boys? Ray. Ray. Oh, Ray. We Ray. already said Anakin. <laughs> Kevin, Anakin. Wow. See, someone's really paying attention over there, Kevin. I'm looking for that picture I was telling you about. <laughs> <laughs> it's Anakin's, right? It's, it's, Anakin, it's Anakin's. Um, it's Anakin's. But you know what? Tweet us a picture of your most expensive movie tie-in or memorabilia, or the one you love the most. Yeah. So that's the oldest one you had, because, hey, one day they'll be worth money. Am I right, guys? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, my Megazord that I got for $100 is now worth 400 So that's only in two years. Maybe mm. that. Uh, maybe your magic sit ball. A magic sit ball is worth a little per- pretty, pretty, pretty penny. Yeah. Pretty penny. Pretty penny. Pretty penny. Pretty penny. But also, so that happened this week, and also Marvel kind of low key released a new trailer. Oh yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. So we got the what, Javi? The Defenders. That's right. The Defenders came out with an actual real trailer. <laughs> yeah. Not not a trailer that showed the clips of the past seasons of the shows, but oh, actual no. just Defenders. Episodes, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, yeah, I I liked it. I'm excited. Yeah, that we finally got to see him be a lawyer after Rosario Dawson have teased it for the last two seasons. Right. <laughs> I know a good lawyer. I know a good lawyer. And there he was being a lawyer. It was <laughs> I, like I like how they sort of showed how at least gave an idea of how all of them sort of like run into each other. But by far, my favorite piece of the trailer 
was uh, Luke Cage and Danny Rand. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, the little the, that. <laughs> so they introduced everyone: Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Danny Rand. Danny, Danny Rand. 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 Yeah, I was gonna say Finn Jones because that's his real name, but that's okay. <laughs> but and then the whole time you're like, oh, okay, cool. And then they finally come together. And they have Iron Fist and uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Wow, these names. Yeah. Good <laughs> <laughs> but they come together, and they are technically the what, Kevin? They are the heroes for hire. So I think they included that in the trailer for a reason. Like, hey, guys, guess what? Wink, wink, nod, Luke nod. Cage season two. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> but so are you excited for it? Or Oh, yeah, I've been excited for this since they announced, announced it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say maybe um, Iron Fist is... Season kind of maybe soured a little any excitement that mm-hmm. everybody else may have. But you're for willing it. to give him a second chance. Oh, definitely. Mm. I mean, maybe he'll be in costume. That costume's kind of weird though, but maybe not. I don't know. I like the deep V neck he has. <laughs> yes. I think that, uh, and I, I know I talked about this earlier, but like, uh, I think Iron Fist sort of, sort of is the Porkins of the uh, Defenders friend group. Man, yeah. we've used Porkins so much. <laughs> so early, about like four ish episodes ago. We talked about if you're the Porkins of your friend group, and Pork- <laughs> Porkins has been a term in this studio, in this in this building we're in, guys. Like, yeah. I've heard multiple people like, "Oh, you're the Porkins." No, I'm the Porkins. <laughs> it's like, wow, man, who knew we transcend right? the <laughs> transcend nerd kind? <laughs> I found a picture, by the way. Okay, well, we'll not, make sure you post that later. Attention. There you go. <laughs> now you can. We're back. <laughs> but also, uh, update: we're in po- p- uh, we're in phase three of Marvel, so Javi's getting phase two, and then eventually get phase three. Yep. Oh, uh, one thing I will say about the trailer that I really liked was the I get towards the end of the trailer you have all four heroes sort of like walking down the hallway. I think it starts out with Jessica Jones, and then you see Daredevil come around the, yeah. the corner, and they're all like fighting people down the hallway. And like the choreography reminded me a little bit of Daredevil season one. Yeah, Daredevil yeah. season one, the stairwell scene. It's so I hope enough, we yeah. get a lot of like it's gonna be good another sequences like long, that. Long shot, which is pretty. It's kind of like the staple now of of the all the Marvel series is the long shot. Final. The Mar- the Marvel on Netflix series. Marvel on Netflix series, sorry. And the choreography, the the fight choreography is a one. Oh yeah, hopefully Danny Rand's choreography looks a little better than it did in um the first Iron Fist yeah. series. I also want Danny Rand to get his butt beat by Luke Cage. Mm, no, nah, I'm saying. But that's just me. Mm-mm, that, that's just my <laughs> piece, no big. Danny Rand, man. I feel like you had a, have a grudge toward him. I ain't got no feelings toward Danny Rand. See me out in the hallway, man. Wow, he has, man. He has Iron Fist, right? You're getting real. No way. Who knew? <laughs> I had no good response to that. <laughs> That's okay. We got you, bud. But also, Marvel is, like we said, in current phase three. It ends. Phase three is going to end with the, I believe, the second Avengers movie. So we'll go Infinity War, Ant Man. So right now, we're at Guardians right now. We yeah. have Spider Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther. Black Panther, which is in 2018, February. which comes out before Infinity War. Infinity War, Ant Man and the Wow! I didn't know Ant Man and the Wasp comes out next year. Really? Wait, it comes really? out in July of next year. Oh, they're, Suppos- they're, supposedly, they're keeping that real low yeah. key. Are they filming that yet? Because I feel like they should be filming that now. Well, they know. could start filming in July, yeah. I guess. Then you have Captain Marvel in March of 2019, <gasps> and then the last one of Phase Three is the second Avengers movie. The second unnamed one. Yeah, and okay. then post Phase Three, which is probably going to be called Phase Four, which would make sense, <laughs> is Spider Man Two Marvel t- Marvel Verse. And then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Those are the ones that have been announced at least. So. Spider Man Prom. Do you want them to like? There you go. I see you. I got you. Do you want them to reboot this universe after the last couple of movies and start over again, or do you want to keep going where they're going this way? I'm just curious. I think they keep going. I think if they need to, you know, they diverge past Tony Stark, diverge past Steve Rogers, right? Correct. Yeah. Is, is Captain America's real name? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> because like as I already said, like Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, they've kind of had contract negotiations of like eh, it might be my last movie blah 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 but then they eventually sign back on I think they might be I mean they've been doing it Robert Downey Jr. has been doing it almost 10 years now that's what I'm thinking next year, I, I don't when wanna, Infinity War comes out I want to see a 60 year old Iron Man like I don't want to see <laughs> I, <laughs> Jarvis <laughs> <laughs> actually <like> Vision <laughs> I agree I think that they continue with the heroes that they keep introducing and like as long as they introduce them in like solid ways, we have now like uh, Doctor Strange, um, yeah, I like Doctor Strange, and we're getting him more incorporated. But I would still like to see like Robert Downey Jr. pop up in future movies, mm-hmm. not maybe not like full on Iron Man, but like as either a like someone for advice or like to help out with like here and there. Okay, I get you. You know what I mean? Yeah, so kind of, not like he's gonna be like he's gonna be featured in Spider Man, but like 
hey Tony, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? And yeah, unless they on. kill him. So off ca- so in, just cameos. Infinity yeah. War. Yeah, unless they kill him off, and then I, I think, can I? Yes, yeah, you, you oh, can do a crisis take. predicts a right. hot take. Uh, this will be a Javi predicts because I don't know if you all agree, but no. I think that they're gonna kill off. Captain America, Steve Rogers, Chris Evans. Oh yeah, they. I think yeah. they were going to because that's actually uh, one of the bigger Captain America comics that yeah, he, he gets died. shot. Yeah. And I believe Falcon becomes Captain mm-hmm. America. Actually, and then we have yeah. Anthony Mackie becomes Captain yeah. America. Yeah, that'd be weird. So that'd be interesting. So in the comics, they do a lot of like, okay, you're Thor. Okay, you're you're <laughs> Iron Man today. Like Pepper Potts becomes Iron Man. You know, you have right. Natalie Portman's character becomes Jane. That's her name. I like that. You get it. You get it. Becomes Not Thor Padme. at one point. Not Padme. Even though she is Padme and she's in this movie right now, we're watching. <laughs> um, but that they take on new mantles, I think that's something they could do. You know, obviously they can't have Natalie Portman be Thor. Yeah, because right. in the comic books, also at one point, Rhodey becomes Iron Man. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, it could happen. Oh, yeah, I forgot about War Machine. Oh, he doesn't have his legs. Remember, he has his legs, but he's still using robot legs. Yeah, he's trying to rehabilitate. Uh, Kevin, himself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's another, there's another happy landing. Yeah. Um, but you know, Doctor Strange is in there now, so he actually can. Kind of, because you saw that one guy in Doctor Strange used magic pretty much to heal himself, mm-hmm. so you could teach him how to do that. Ooh, Ooh man, man. Ooh, I, I didn't think about that. That's, that's, a, pool, that's, that's a really good pull. Was that's off the top of my head? That was very yeah. good. Pool. <laughs> 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 but I mean, they've already they're, they're going to do a Black Panther movie. They've done an Ant Man movie, Guardians of the Galaxy. Technically, Iron Man is B team Marvel. In a, a grand, yeah, and yeah. now he's A team Marvel, yeah. and then Guardians is I think I would consider Guardians A team Marvel now. Oh yeah. They made so much money for Marvel now. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but it's I like, do think it's funny though how like in Black Panther, it was pretty much like if you're a black actor in Hollywood, I'm gonna be in this movie. It's <laughs> so. Hey, you know what? They got. I love this cast. I love it's it. It's literally everybody that's in Hollywood that's black. Like, hey, wanna be in the movie? Come here. Come on. <laughs> it's gonna be lit though. It's gonna be real lit. <laughs> they got Andy Circus in there, guys. Come on. And he and he's a bad guy, which he's is like that looks really bad. And, and oh, they're gonna have Martin Freeman too. Really? Morgan Freeman? Martin, Martin Freeman. Not Martin Morgan Freeman. Freeman. I was like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, Kevin. So Black Panther, the cast is Chadwick Boseman. You know him from, I believe, the, the Jackie Robinson Jackie movie. Jackie Robinson and... Yeah, 42. And, um, and, and Black Panther, as it in Civil War. In Civil War. James Brown. Yeah. In and James Brown. The get, uh, not, get on get, up. Get on up. Yeah, that's what it was, was, yeah. Michael B. Jordan's in it. Yes, Michael. Lapita Nyong'o is in it. Lapita! Okay, Maz Kanata from Force Awakens. You are not, Good job with these names, by the way. Uh, Dan Dene Guerrera, Guerrera. I don't know who she is. Who? Oh wait, oh wait, wait. Dene Guerrera is uh, what's Michonne. Yeah, Michonne. I didn't oh, know. Michonne did it. I awesome. didn't know her real yeah. name. It's Michonne. Forrest Whitaker's in it. Yep. <gasps> Save the, save the rebellion. Save, the rebellion. <laughs> save, save, save Wakanda. Save Wakanda. Uh, <laughs> and then our best friend, uh, Daniel Kalua from actually our best friend's movie, Jordan Peele, uh, Get Out, Daniel Kalua, the awesome. main character. Awesome. Yeah. Angela Bassett from American Horror Story fame nowadays. Yes. Uh, Florence Kasumba. Uh, this cast is just straight fire, fam. And then Andy Serkis, Martin Freeman. Those are the main headliners right there. Yeah. So. Ooh. Do you think Captain America's going to be in that movie, by the way? I think they might tease it. I think because he's kind of the Iron Man to Spider Man and Spider Man Homecoming. Well, not even that though, because he's actually in Wakanda. That's where he is now after the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if he's going to be able well, like, they, walking they, around. They're probably going to do a Black Panther origin story because I don't know anything about Black Panther. Well, you're right. It'll probably be an origin you, story. Yeah. Do you, well, you think it's going to be an origin story? Because I mean, the way that they, I'm, well, wow, they're probably, my voice they might do really flashback. Dropped. Like the first, they'll, yeah. they'll do how Batman vs Superman was. Was like, all right, we're going to show you the Batman thing just in case you don't know. Right. By that time, we'll probably know. By 2018, we'll know. Yeah. But just in case you don't know. Because, because you don't know. I, I think we're going to see some interaction and some role play between, or like uh, a relationship form between Black Panther and Winter Soldier. Bucky. Bam. Because remember, yeah, Bucky, too, you're right. you're right. Bucky is there. You're so right. if you watch Civil War, the end for Captain America and his sort of Avengers side, I don't know what you call it, they sort of in Wakanda while Iron Man's training the new Avengers yeah. in the Avengers complex, yeah. whatever that's called, really. They didn't really say what it's called. Because Captain America was breaking out the rest of the crew from exactly. the so prison. They're probably all in. Well, so many questions now. What happens to Ant Man then? Because Ant Man has Ant Man 2 coming out. So does he get out of. Wow. There's so many questions right now. He escaped prison there's once. So he can questions. do it again. <laughs> He'll do it again. Not the vault. They un- they're, they're underwater. <laughs> 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 Just call Aquaman. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong universe. I'm sorry. It's Sub-manner. okay. It's all right. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Namor. Namor. There you go. Call, call Namor. Speaking of Namor, who's a very unannounced superhero who's owned apparently by, I believe, 20, not 20th century. 
the, the people that made the Incredible Hulk franchise. Universal? Universal, that's yeah. what it is. There you go. I was like, oh, what is it? Oh, Universal technically owns... Ooh, that's interesting. Jordan Peele does Namor movie? Oh, he did, he did so Jordan Peele just... signed a deal. I just remember that. Yeah, Jordan Peele just signed a deal with Universal to do like four more pictures. One of the next one's like a social social thriller movie. Mm-hmm. So it'd probably just like Get Out, but not like Get Out. Um, what if he does the Namor movie? <laughs> Plot twist. I'd watch that. What if it's a Hulk movie? I don't know. Hulk's owned by Marvel now. His he, he oh, is in Marvel. Over? Okay, he went yeah. over. But everything else like is technically universal. So, mm. Woo. speaking of uh, unannounced characters, Marvel's Runaways, Kevin on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah, I went through the cast today. I I don't know any of those actors. Okay, that's okay because I, <laughs> I have a list for you. So you have so the Runaways, Kevin. What's that really about then? So here's the thing. It was kind of about this. What I remember is it was like like one of those series that kind of like you remember Land of the Lost, where it was like in a, in a different land fighting dinosaurs and stuff like that. Yes. It was kind of like that in the comic books, but now they're doing like a whole totally different thing with the Runaways on Hulu. So I have. Well, essentially, and this is what has been released on the premise is that six teenagers from different backgrounds unite against a common enemy, their criminal parents, uh... commonly known as the Pride. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's it's like cool. oh, they want to be superheroes, but they're running away from their parents who are villains. That makes sense now. Yeah, because in the comic book, they're more, it's more kind of kind of like a general kid adventure series, kind of mm-hmm. like you sell it in the supermarket in the, in the checkout line type of thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so, do you want to know some people and see if you can kind of guess what the mo- the series is about? This game is always fun. Yeah. And this is, this, it's my favorite <laughs> game. Where do you know who this is? We need to figure out a name. <laughs> Cast. Wait, is it? Was it casting? Casting call. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Not casting couch, because that's something different. Something naughty. No. <laughs> we just Don't. ended the podcast there. <laughs> <laughs> something naughty. Something naughty. Don't so, look it up. All right, so this is our casting call, which is we show you who, tell not show you, we tell you who's being casted as who, and let you know a little bit more of that character. We did it with the... Uh, squirrel, girl. squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. Squirrel girl. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I got uh, you. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. I got you. So, first up first, we have Victor Stein which is a character not Martin Stein from The Flash. This is all Marvel, by the way. Uh-huh. So keep that in your head. Uh, he is played by James Marsters. Does that sound familiar, Kevin? Yes, it does. Why? He was Brainiac in Smallville. Correct. Oh. Ooh. Javi doesn't remember Smallville. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> Victor Stein is an engineering ge- genius who may save the world from itself, but he has electric cars, space travel, and the military, and NASA. All looking to him for answers. As a father to the chase, Victor has lofty expectations for his son, and when they aren't met, his retribution can be fierce. I love these descriptions. They're so, like, in-depth, not in-depth at all. I did some details. <laughs> oh, actually, here's another familiar one you might get. Oh, no. I thought he looked like someone I knew. That was wrong. <laughs> someone that he used to no. know. Oh. All right, so you want something fun, something cool? Let's do this one. All right, sweet. Chase Stein, in relation to Victor Stein, played by Greg Sulkin. You might not recognize that name, but you recognize this face because he was in Wizards of Waverly Place. He was the werewolf boyfriend oh, to Selena he? Gomez. Oh, yes. He did it, Alex? Yeah. Okay. Javi Alex? knows who that is, but he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lacrosse playing high school heartthrob while many write him off as a dumb jock. Chase exhibits flashes. I'm that brilliance. Okay, what is with lacrosse players and being werewolves? Oh, I'm sorry. This is two different shows. I'm yes, sorry. There you go. That's okay. All right. And then we have Gert. <laughs> Gert Yorkies, played Gert. by Ariella Barrere. She is a purple-haired bespectacled, bespectacled, bespectacled. Yep. Bes- oh, that's a weird word. How do you say bespectacled? Bespectacled. Okay, because cool. they're spectacles. Contemporary riot girl. Oh, there's a typo on that one. <laughs> that's girl. Uh, never passing up a moment to stand on a soapbox. Gert sometimes wields her persona as a brash social justice warrior to mask her true feelings. Also, apparently, she has a pet dinosaur. So that'd be cool. It's a velociraptor. A velociraptor. All right, then we have. Oh, that that is okay. Cool. We have Alex Wilder played by Renz Files. He's a loud and proud nerd, just like us guys. Oh my gosh, loud and proud. <laughs> Say it loud. Say I'm it a, proud. I'm a nerd. I'm He's proud. admittedly a bit of a loner. Oh, just like us. Alex spends much of his free time playing video games. Oh, just like us. <laughs> but deep down, what he wants most is to reunite his childhood group of friends. Aww. But I like my adulthood group of friends, which is you guys. Oh. <laughs> then you got Nico Minoru, played by Lyrica Okon- Okano. She's a tough, intelligent, independent 
teen. She's a rude but crude dude, but she's a female uh, who embodies teenage angst. A budding Wiccan. Oh, she's a Wiccan. Ooh. Nico's carefully crafted goth appearance isolates her from her peers and family, but maybe she really needs someone to talk to. Maybe he's an old man in me, but I'm, I'm finding the show already annoying. Yep. But I, it's going to be another high school show, so I, get ready for that. I'm here for all these high school <laughs> shows. Well, see, like we said, like Marvel, they're cranking out the C and D teams now on these TV shows. They're like, oh, what, in humans? In humans is a thing now. This yeah. Is the, this is the G team. What are you talking about? <laughs> then you got Carolina Dean, played by Virginia Gardner. Model, perfect exterior. What? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> this is the casting call for her. Model, perfect exterior. <laughs> With a lot going on behind a professionally whitened smile, Carolina is burdened by the lofty expectations and responsibilities put upon her by her parents. Underneath her veneer of privilege and perfection, Carolina, with a K, they misspelled that, is experiencing a newfound eagerness to explore her identity and pursue her own desires. So they haven't really given away their powers, which is kind of interesting, which is good because I don't know anything about their powers. And this is going on Hulu? Yeah. This is going on Hulu. Okay. Now Freeform. ABC Family. <laughs> That's what it's called. It ABC family. <laughs> That's what it's called. It's not that one forever. It's but. not going to go between Degrassi and uh, Cloak and Dagger. No. So Cloak and Dagger is going to freeform. You are correct. New Warriors, which is the Squirrel Girl one, oh, yeah. is That's going to freeform. freeform. So okay. two high school. So there's three high school Marvel shows, and then there's a high school movie, which is Spider Man. And it's kind of confusing <laughs> to us sound, a little bit, this too. This kind of sounds like another network that does three different uh, comic book shows also during the week, but I'm not going to say anything. Oh, you mean the, the CW? Oh, yeah. So you think it would make sense to just put it all on one one network where yes. it should belong? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. At one time. <laughs> no. Technically, no, they're not all at one time. Well, I mean, like, they started, like, eight, two, they started eight seven. Oh, yes. Okay, okay I see yeah, where you're yeah. going. Like, starting at one time. <laughs> they don't air all three. Um, but I'm interested. I don't have Hulu... Account out of the free Hulu? I do. I do. Sweet. So we got Kevin for the series last week where we talked about WB. WB. Oh, yeah. It's for the WB TV show. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That's right. And then we got Javi for Hulu. Actually, I didn't yep. get Hulu because um, Scrubs leaving Netflix soon. I don't love that show. So I had to get Hulu. I'm no Superman, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my, favorite, my favorite shows of all time. Honestly. I'm no Superman. Man, that's a good show. Really good show. Ooh, man. Ooh. So that that's coming out in probably like a year or so. But something that's out right now. American Gods. Ooh. Kevin, mm. tell me about it. So apparently it's a show about... It's apparently it's a show. <laughs> apparently it's a show. That's, that's what I know for sure, 100%. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a show about, I guess, the old, like, I guess, Greek gods are still, like, around. They don't have to compete with, like, movies and television and all this other stuff. New technology, guys. And new technology. But I think I'm the only person that does, like, I don't... I don't want to watch it. Like it looks too heavy. I do. I'm ex- I'm excited. <laughs> I'm to watch excited. It. I, it is currently on, on stars. stars. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, I don't have stars. I, I might have to get stars. Not direct. a lot of people buy stars. <laughs> <laughs> if I get stars direct, I'll let you know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got you up. Sorry. I'll give you guys my HBO Go if you don't have that already. <laughs> I feel like everyone has HBO Go though. We got HBO. It's like the one everyone has because of Game of Thrones. <laughs> But uh, Kevin, do you know anything about it? Javi, do you know anything about it? Oh, besides a, the trailers, I have obviously. a friend that watches it. He, he actually read the books based on a book series. Yeah, by Neil Gaiman, right? Yeah, he read the books and he loves the book, and he's really excited about the show. He said the show is pretty good, but this, this is coming from my lifelong, or well, really big fan of the books and, and the show. So I, I'll give it a watch, but I generally can't. I have to keep my my heavy TV light because if it gets too heavy on me it has to affect on me emotionally and then I start to become like one of those deep mm. people I don't want to be that <laughs> oh you get all up in your feels exactly so if this convinces you Ian McShane McShane yeah. is in it as Mr. Wednesday oh, a con artist and the old god he's Odin. Odin so it's not Marvel it's not tied to any Marvel or DC it's some kind of thing like Game of Thrones it's based on a book as he said but Peter Stormar is Sir, Sir Zenobog who is a god of darkness and evil who suspects Mr. Wednesday, who's Ian McShane, is evil. I'm reluctant to let us save. But it's also got Dane Cook, Kristen Chenoweth, and Orlando Jones. Where's yeah. Dane Cook been? Well, he's been filming American Gods. That's where he's been. <laughs> Same thing with Orlando Jones. There you go. But it's focused on Shadow Moon, who is a person's name. A man serving three years in prison with only days remaining in his sentence. Shadow is given an unexpected early release after his wife is killed. Right. Shadow finds himself next to a man named Wednesday, who offers him a job. Which appears to be nothing but a con artist who needs Shadow as a bodyguard, but is in fact the god Odin. Wednesday is making their way across America, gathering all the old gods who have now incorporated themselves into American life to confront the new gods, including media and technology, who grow stronger. Just like Kevin said, old stuff versus the new stuff. 
Yep. It's, kind of cool. it's interesting. Uh, apparently, it's been really good. Um, Orlando Jones is seen as Mr. Nancy, who is an African trickster god. Ooh. It was very good because apparently, I watched it. It was it was trending this week that he was on actual. It was back during the six. 17th century, 1600s. How to do the math there? Man, history, <laughs> man. That was a trip right there. <laughs> it's the 17th century, but it's in the 1600s. That makes no sense. <laughs> um, so he's traveling with on the first ships coming from England and Africa over to the U.S. in a, in a ship that has a bunch that has many um, slaves coming over to America. But he's telling them that the, these scenes of just like y'all aren't going to have a good time. Like he's pre- telling them their whole story for the next. 400 years this wow. now. But it even goes to a point where he's like, yeah, but in the future, like, it'll get better. You think it gets better, but then you're bleeped again. Oh, I bleeped wow. myself. Mm. And then it's like, whoo. He's like, you think it gets better, but it doesn't. I was like, oh, man. Like, this is some truth right here. Yeah. Wow. So that, and so that's sort of like old God. He's an old God. and You have new God of media technology. It will be interesting. It's an interesting concept. Yeah. Let's say that. I'm I'm excited to watch it. I'm mm-hmm. interested to see how they manifest each. Mm-hmm. They manifest the gods. Yes. Between Game of Thrones and Westworld, I, my heavy TV is just too heavy right now, so I gotta I gotta chill on this one. Mm. <laughs> I need some happy TV <laughs> for happy once. TV. <laughs> and then finally, the last trailer before we get into Star Wars in like two ish minutes, <laughs> Dark Tower trailer came out this week. Javi, who's actually reading the books right now, I am. Who is casted in it? The main cast, at least. Idris Elba. Oh yes, yes, yes. And Matthew Idris. McConaughey. Uh, Idris Elba plays the gunslinger, and Matthew McConaughey plays. The man in black. And like like Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones? Uh I, I think a little bit worse than those men in black. Oh man. Yeah. And just like throwing this out there, I'm still like in the first like third of the book or so. So I'm kind of making my way through right making now. Making my way downtown. Walking. Oh, that's our, that's a song next week. <laughs> and I miss you. And I miss you. <laughs> and now I wonder. Okay, no more. No more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's about or at least the movie uh, takes aspects of the first book and apparently the third book too, uh, and is about this young boy who is around eleven or twelve, and he finds a portal to a different world, and that world is called Midworld, and that's the world that Idris Elba, uh, the gunslinger, exists, and the gunslinger is chasing Matthew McConaughey, who is supposedly the bad guy, the Man in Black. And like, Here comes the man in black. <laughs> man. Sorry, keep going. Great. Sorry. And Pink so off. it's about uh, the gunslinger, Idris Elba, is trying to get to this dark tower, which is probably, I believe, the bridge between their world and our world. Mm. And I think the man in black wants to either destroy the tower and destroy the world or do to invade our world or something like that. Um, I can't give you the specifics because I'm not that far yet. Mm, there you go. Yeah. yeah, but that's the general gist. It looks, it looked pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited Some about more it. new original movies, which is great. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I heard, I know this has a very big uh, following, a loyal following, um, because people love the books. I did read one thing that said, um, I thought I was watching an original movie, and then at the second part of the trailer, it's like, oh, it's just Last Action Hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> it looks good though. I mean, I'm really excited to see mm-hmm. it. I know some of the hardcore fans of the book didn't really care for the trailer too much, but that's a, anything you release is always going to be the case. Yeah. So just give it a chance. Just like uh, the the book series with uh, American Gods. Yeah. There even go. even, even Marvel movies all the time. Yeah. You know, like they did in the comics. Well, it's, well not a comic. It's a movie. It's its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, speaking of its own thing, actually its own phenomenon, some would call it a menace, a phantom menace. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Others would count, call it the best thing ever to happen to them next to their girlfriend. <laughs> uh, we're talking about say. what javi star wars day yeah we are today is star wars day like we said at the beginning of the episode <laughs> and star wars day if you didn't know is may 4th because you know we like jokes of may the 4th be with you may right? the 4th be with you and also with you which i don't I, I guess that's part of it they don't say that in the movies but that's okay <laughs> but so are you guys having a great star wars day or yeah no I got to work this morning while watching Phantom Menace, so I'm having a great day. You were driving in the car and watching Phantom no, Menace. No, I was I was actually in the studio. And oh, okay, it was so on. you didn't do any work, is what you're saying <laughs> yes. today? I Maybe. work very hard. <laughs> so, do you guys want to know the origin of Star Wars today? Yes. So, like I said, I'm probably the one that loves Star Wars the most out of three of us because I grew up in it. But it all started not technically 40 years, almost 40, 38 years ago. I mean, the first Star Wars movie came out 40 years ago this year. In 1977. Wow. Yes. 
Um, so in, but it was in 1979 that British election for Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher became the first female Prime Minister and put on an ad in the London Evening News to celebrate her victory. In her ad, it read, May the 4th be with you, because she got elected that day. May the 4th be with you, Maggie. Congratulations. Boom. All the Star Wars wow. people, because that was a year before Empire Strikes Back, technically two years after A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Mm, Star Wars publicity right there. And boom, the rest is follows. There you go. Wow. The more you know. The more you know. Ding. Trademarked, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but after all that, you know, Star Wars is a huge thing. It's 40 years now. And I'm excited. Oh, man. It's been a good day so far. It's been, I mean, we started out with blue. Oh, oh. oh have you, have you drinking your blue milk recently or did you chug he's, it already? I'm, I've been done. Oh, yeah. So I just looked at, I just looked at the other if one. If you happen one. to forget, Javi and I are still doing a bet at the end of this episode and go, it'll go on our social media is at infinite underscore pods where someone has to drink this warm milk. I'm going to test, I'm going to not, not test it. I'm going to just feel it. I was going to say, if you're going to test it, you might as well just drink the whole thing. Oh, it smells warm. You want to uh, smell it? Yeah. Let me give it a whiff. Oh, it's uh, it's guys, beginning bro. to curdle a little bit. Oh, oh no. gosh. No, no, yeah, there's no, a no. hair in there? Oh. No, 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 no. That's going to be great. <laughs> but that'll be a little fun little post-podcast fun right there. No, 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 but no, 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 no. Star Wars, no, no. I want to know, in honor of this day of every Star Wars, out of the entire saga, because it's not a franchise, it's a saga. At least the movies are. <laughs> the lifestyle. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. It's a the lifestyle. lifestyle. <laughs> what is, or who is technically your favorite character? Overall, it could be the main cast. My favorite character, it's going to sound whatever, is Mace Windu, honestly. Mace Windu? That doesn't yes. sound weird at all. Okay. The reason why he's my favorite character, though, because he was the only Jedi that could fight in a fighting style that touched the dark side of the Force, but not submit to the dark side of the Force. It's a testament to how strong he was mm. as a Jedi. Mm. There was that scene in the first- So who plays Mace Windu, just in case- I'm pretty sure everyone listens. If if you're listening to this podcast, you've seen Star Wars. So <laughs> Samuel L. Mother Jackson. Yes, <laughs> who has bad MF on his lightsaber. <laughs> but what uh, if you didn't don't know who that is? What lightsaber color did he have? Purple. 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 So Kevin, why do you why do you love him the most besides that? There's also a scene. Do um, you remember the first Clone Wars cartoon on Cartoon Network? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a scene in there where he beats up a battalion of battle droids by himself. Ooh. Mm. No lightsaber, just the force. Mm. And wow. then, at the end of it, he, he's going after General Grievous. General Grievous sent them all after him. At the end of it, he almost has Grievous. Grievous gets away, and he uses the force to crush his voice box. That's why he, he, he coughed the whole time in um, Revenge of the Sith. Mm. Uh, didn't know that. But he was a he was a bad dude. Like, it was like, whoa. Mm. What, where were you in A New Hope? Like, it would have been one movie, and then everybody would have been happy. <laughs> <laughs> So that's your favorite main character. Who is your favorite most obscure character? So this is anyone who could be in the background, who got a name or got a backstory because of expanded universe stuff, because they made him canon, which we know is now in the movie timeline. Who's your favorite most obscure character? I think, I hope his name's right. I think his name's Dex in the Attack of the Clones. Oh, you mean Dax? Dax, yeah, the, that's Dex. The diner guy? The diner guy. He got to own the diner in Attack of the Clones. Mm-hmm. He's um Obi Wan was looking for information on actually it's Dexter Jetster. Dexter, okay. It's Dexter. Dex for short, yes. Got you. So you're technically right. So Obi Wan was looking for information on this poison dart that he found, and he took it to this guy and Dexter in this in his um in his diner who used to be a prospector, so he kinda knew some planets that people didn't really know about. He was able to tell him all about it and how to and track down who who I made it. Was it the Camino the Camino wins? What what was that name? The Camino. Camino wins. Camino wins, yeah, old man of Camino, where they made the clones at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This guy knew about it. It wasn't because he was like an information broker. It wasn't because he was, you know, just a powerful dude. He's just a regular guy that did some work, and so he knows things. He sees things, you know. And mm-hmm. it, it gave me the impression that Obi Wan is more than a Jedi. He actually knows people around the world, around the galaxy. That they're, they're not just, you know, Jedi or senators. He was like a man of the people almost. The people. The people. The people. Which is Kevin's favorite word to say. The people. The people. The people. Cool. So you did you do you have you followed up? Do you know what happened to him after well, that? Canon, I guess, guess canon wise, I'm guessing he's just, you know, went about his life after the new Imperial, mm-hmm. the Imperial, the Imperial, um, I mean, the Galactic Empire took over. I think in the expanding universe, actually, once they took over, he went to like the deep recesses of Coruscant to live. Yes. So he had to deal with, deal with the. Uh, so he has a mention in Star Wars Aftermath. Yeah. And then he's a non canon, he's in Disney Infinity 3. So if you want to get that game, which has <laughs> been discontinued and it's hard to find actually now. Actually, I hear now those, those figures are worth a lot of money because he discontinued them. Oh, really? Some of them are real cheap though. Yeah. If you go to like a Walmart or Target, you're like, oh, oh, five bucks. Mm, wait till you two bucks. Wait till that. All right, Javi, you up now? All right. 
Favorite character? Favorite main character. Favorite main character, I'd probably say Obi-Wan. Mm. My man, the man of the people. Now, are we talking about old Obi-Wan or young Obi-Wan? Uh, I want to talk about like Obi-Wan sort of like as as a whole. Okay. Because I feel like they like whether it be the animated series um or the like the prequels or the uh original trilogy, like Obi-Wan is just this character that you sit there and you're like, "I right. you like he's a mentor, but he is sort of like a man of the people. He has like this wisdom and he he has uh he can step up in the action sequence if mm. he needs to. Also, he's he, people sleep on him. People sleep he's on smart him. Guy. Yeah. I mean like he knew about the well, he has the informants. Yeah. He's got the skills. And plus, when he was fighting Vader, he put his lightsaber down and he became one with the, the best, force. The be- one of the best toys ever is just the, the pile of clothes. <laughs> and it's like for 40 bucks. Like, like, my man was like, all right, game on. And he stepped his game up to the next level. <laughs> One of the funniest jokes I've seen is when a parent asks a, a kid, and usually it's usually a son, sometimes a, girl, uh, a daughter, where they ask, why are your clothes all over the floor? He's like, oh, I transcended into the force, Mom. You should be proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks around the whole house no clothes on. Like, what, what is he doing? What you doing? Why are you in the Death Star? Just leave him alone. He's, he's been in the Millennium Falcon the whole time, just naked. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Javi, who's your most... He's one of your favorite obscure characters, so background, I, not really main, not merely named, I guess. So, I got... I switched up a little bit here. Okay. Um, his name is Rugar Rugar Nas, and he is the like the Gungan like president from the first uh, movie, uh, and like uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Misa. Uh, <laughs> and here's why: because he was about to straight up mess with Jar Jar Binks, like destroy Jar Jar Binks for messing up. Yeah. And he would have saved the trilogy a whole lot of <laughs> a whole lot of mess. But, uh, but Qui Gon Jinn had to go up and be like, "Yo, yo, yo, save my man's life real quick." And Don't he's talk like, no mess about Qui Gon. Plus, he's in. Technically, he is in uh, Star- Revenge of the Sith is briefly. He? Oh, mm-hmm. true. So when Pat spoilers, you, hopefully you've seen a movie that's almost twelve years now. <laughs> Padme dies, but he's at his funeral with Jar Jar. Jar Jar. <laughs> Why I oughta. Dello Felligan. <laughs> he's also in a bunch of Clone Wars episodes and that too. But yes, you yeah. Like, I think you must identify because that's that's pretty much it. Right why there. do you identify with him? Okay, well, there are also a lot of memes comparing him to a certain president, but oh, ooh, oh, well oh, then, oh, Kevin, boy. wow, wow, they're, they're funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're funny. I'm not being disrespectful. It's just funny when you look at it. Like, wow, they actually kind of look alike. All right, now there's a lot to us. Does someone want to ask me a question? Hey, hoodie. Hey, oh, hey, guys. Who? You're hosting the show right now. <laughs> Who is your favorite character? character. Oh, I'm proud. I'm proud of you guys. Wow. Be ready for that follow-up question too, though. <laughs> All right. So my favorite character is pretty easy. I'm rocking him right now, Boba Fett. Okay. The most ba bounty hunter in the galaxy. Even though he, he technically goes out like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> in Return of the Jedi, or does he? Or does he? That's no, expanding nah, universe. Nah, We're not he, sure yet. He, goes out like <laughs> he a could chump. be back. You don't know. <laughs> um, but Boba Fett is the bounty hunter. Is introduced in Empire Strikes Back movie verse, and then you know he comes back in Attack of the Clones as a kid with his dad, Jango Fett. Even cooler. The ship has a bad name. It's called Slave One. Uh, take that as a will. It's it's a ship. And it's there are shipment. slaves in the world. It's called Slave One. Let's move on. It's That's fine. all right. Cool. And then <laughs> he's just so cool because he has a jetpack. One of his toys actually caused people to choke. <laughs> that's why I love no, Noah. I was about to say, this guy's saving more problematic. Real, he's a real but bounty hunter. And technically, his dad is, he originally, he's a Mandalorian, which is cool. It's a warrior class. Right. I guess, not species of warrior, but. Race. R- race, I guess you yeah. could say. Warrior race of warriors just. Over time, they originally had a lightsaber, too, which is cool. Think of the Saiyans of the Star Wars world. Yes. They're the Mandalorian. They're badass. Yeah. But it's just cool because he was technically a clone of his dad, Jango Fett. And so Mandalorian armor kind of inspired clone armor in Attack of the Clones, mm-hmm. Revenge of the Sith, and then eventually Stormtrooper armor. So it's because of Boba Fett. We have all this cool-looking <laughs> Stormtroopers and helmets and all that good stuff. And Jango Fett sort of too, but that's okay. But he kind of went out of a pump like a punk. But technically... In Star Wars Legends, which isn't part of the canon, it's kind of what was before oh, the old expanded universe and doesn't really count anymore. He came back out of the Sarlacc pit, so I'm I'm gonna go with that. Nah. All right. Who, Who is, is your, your favorite, favorite obscure, obscure 
character. What's my name? Hoodie. Hoodie. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my favorite obscure character, and you will never know his name technically unless you really pay attention. A little, not even a character. It's mainly a droid. Goes by the name of R five D four. Uh huh. Yeah, who's that? So R five D four probably doesn't ring a bell. Sounds like R two D two because he was the the droid that almost got bought by Uncle Owen, Aunt Peru, and Luke in the first first Star Wars movie, A New Hope. Mm. He's called Red almost. So Luke says to him, "Come on, Red, let's go." He eventually moves on, and then he starts to blow up. And he has a broken power converter, oh. and it's if, if it wasn't without him breaking that power converter, R two D two wouldn't be over Luke. If R five D four didn't have a malfunction, Luke wouldn't have the the, the Death Star plans. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't have found Obi Wan. Wouldn't have had the whole trilogy. I want to say I read something that said originally they want they want to like say like R five had like the Force in him for some reason. Mm. I don't know if I read this somewhere or not. I think you might be making it up. No, no, I'm, I'm gonna read it. Okay, See, so. even but, but it was on Wikipedia. Though. Even in the Star, <laughs> yeah. So Wikipedia is star, sort of the Star Wars Wikipedia. It's where yeah. they pull their stuff at. So, and this is according to them. So take it with salt. R five D four is malfunctioning. Let it Skywalker discover the message from Leia, which was delivered to Obi Wan, which he meant Han Solo. They met Chewbacca, and as a result of that, they eventually, you know, destroyed the Death Star, and then, you know, eventually, you know. Destroyed the empire right. and then brought balance to the force, as far as we know. Allegedly. Oh, I thought you guys were gonna tie up on that. That's a good question. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> but so R five D four is the main reason why we have Star Wars. So you can thank him for that. Thank you, R five. We love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your sacrifice. Yeah. Well, not really sacrifice. Enjoy. You can put it back together. Stay, <laughs> stay broke, my friend. And then <laughs> I think one one more question I want to ask in most hated character is it probably be very easy. Pretty easy to take on the count of three. One, two, three. Jar Jar. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's be straight. But I will say he caused the empire to form. I, I, <laughs> yeah, Darth Jar Jar. I really hated Palpatine a lot. Which one, young Palpatine or old Palpatine? All of them. Oh, Cru- crusty Palpatine. Update on <gasps> Star Wars Episode Three: oh! Revenge of the Sith. They're doing the exact same. Kevin's Did you talking ever hear about. the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Plagueis the Wise. Darth oh, Plagueis I hate him so wise. much. Wow, Look at man. him. That is good timing on our part. That is a little smirk. Oh, oh, I hate him so much. <laughs> I wonder how much them tickets cost for that show because it doesn't look very entertaining. <laughs> Who's well, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine? So oh, that's the partner of oh. Jedi. Oh, I'm afraid the shield will be quite operational when your friends arrive. Like, shut up, Palpatine. Are you, are you good? <laughs> he made me mad. Boris <laughs> Whitaker, when'd you get here? <laughs> All right. Save the rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so as you can tell, we made as we said we've made blue milk, which has been great. That's how we're celebrating. But there's tons of other ways you can celebrate. Amazon, other places, they're having tons of deals you can buy stuff with, which is good. You know, if you want to save some money. By the time you hear this, a TBS will be halfway through their Star Wars marathon. So you today. can start with A New Hope, <laughs> or if not, you know, just watch it on your own. That's okay. That's yeah. children. If you have the Blu-ray, the DVDs. Is there a way to watch that digitally digital? yet? Like yeah. like streaming wise. Like Not one? streaming wise. Oh, no. I thought you meant like buy it digitally. I, b- I believe Rogue One will be the first one that'll be streamed on like a Netflix. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but they haven't released it yet. True. Mm-hmm. So you make Blue Milk. You can enjoy the music of John Williams, who conducted the main series of Star Wars films minus Rogue One, which isn't main series, and that's okay. But it's still really good. Or you could ride Star Tours, the Disneyland Disney World ride that takes you on a, sh- a tour of the Star Wars universe. True. Have you guys ever read that ride? No, I haven't been. I haven't been. Down there yet? So they did all the cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. You can, you'd be in a lightsaber fight. Oh, I haven't done that. I haven't gone to the Jedi Academy either. Mm, there you go. Or you can watch the trailer for Star Wars: Last Jedi. Something you can do today. There's a funny video actually of one of those Star Wars fights where the guy, where the kid wants to be on the dark side, and not be a Jedi. It's pretty funny. <laughs> but yeah, so th- I'm excited for Star Wars. And another thing I want to talk about before we get in the DC check-in is things that have come from the expanding universe, like we've said, Star Wars Legends. Into canon, which has been the real main things, and we can now celebrate as a part of Star Wars Day as being real things. Are you interested? Yes. Yes, of course. Yes. Why, yes, of course, Hoodie. So as we know, Star Wars 13, 13 didn't come into fruition. The Boba Fett game. Uh, that was supposed to be by the Uncharted uh, people. Because cancellations. And a lot of these things have benefited because of Star Wars actually getting bought out by Disney. So thank them for that. The first one I want to talk about is a little guy goes by the name of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Okay. Javi, do you have any inkling on who he is? 
Is that the the blue the blue? Correct, that's the blue, blue general. There you the go, blue general. Yeah, there you go. That's I mean, like I know he is a very bad. He's like a bad guy. He's a bad, he's, bad man. But he's also like I guess strategically, uh, he's a gen- a tactical genius, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all I really know. I don't watch the TV shows. That's okay. Kevin, any idea who he is? I have no clue. That's okay. So <laughs> Grand Admiral Grand Admiral Thrawn was introduced in the 1991 expanding universe book Heir to the Empire. By Timothy Zahn, uh, essentially, it made him, he made an impression and appeared in, in a number of stories throughout the universe. He was kind of the the villain after the original trilogy that people were like, "Oh man, he looks like Nightcrawler." It looks like Nightcrawler a little bit, <laughs> but then he went away when Star Wars got rid of the expanded universe, but was brought back on season three of Star Wars Rebels right. last year. He is technically now he still is the primary villain, pitted against the crew on Star Wars Rebels. And the budding Rebel Alliance, and he's a badass. Right, <laughs> he looks cool. Like he's blue, blue face, and now he's even to a point that they've that Timothy Zahn, the guy who made the first original book with mm-hmm. Thrawn, made another book called Thrawn. That's it, and it's his origin story, which is cool. It's out now. Okay, by a local bookstore. I might rent it. Are there still bookstores around? Yes, there. Go, go to bookstores. Go to bookstores or Amazon. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, Amazon. Go to Amazon. I'll go to bookstores. Come on, Save man. Save your time. Support your local bookstore. Save your gas. And then I have two more. So another right. one goes by a name, a droid named RX-24. Might not sound familiar. That's okay, because he's the droid from Star Tours. Oh. So originally, you know, you were on Disney World. Not you two, I guess. <laughs> uh, went on the right Star Tours, and you're like, oh, this robot's kind of cool. And his name was RX-24, a.k.a. Captain Rex. Well, eventually on Star Wars Rebels again, he appeared in the episode Droids in Distress as a pilot for a ship called the Star Commuter and voiced by Paul Rubens, who actually voices the robot on the ride. Oh, that's pretty cool. So he's cool. now part that's of canon. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So they're tying all this stuff that I was like, I guess the ride's canon. Making it canon. <laughs> so I'm excited for the new Star Wars ride and see if that's canon. That'd be if, interesting. If I ride the ride, does that make me canon? That makes you canon. Aha! Like you were how, on that how ship. How far away is Disneyland away from L.A.? Disneyland? It's in Anaheim. Why? Oh, we talk about... Oh, no, nah, fam. I can't afford that. <laughs> okay, mister. I'm staying three days extra. <laughs> I got to I gotta buy this uh, phase two. That's, I mean, you can hold phase. out and go on to Disneyland for us one day. It's 45 minutes, guys. Oh. 30, 30 miles. About 30 miles. 30, 30 miles of Uber. Ride. I also believe it's 90 bucks to go to Disney. But that's okay. <laughs> we cannot eat. Ah. We just won't eat. We're <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm going to be eating outside the park. Watch y'all. Have fun, guys. <laughs> and then one more thing that might sadden you. So you guys ever see the Star Wars special, the Christmas special? Kevin might. I don't think Javi probably does. I, was, I mentioned no. Nick. So I've actually watched it because I was like, I've never seen it. I want to see it. <laughs> and Chewbacca essentially has a son and a wife. Yeah. And <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, <laughs> so in the holiday special, we meet a son named Lumpy, short for Lumparwarump. And you're like, okay, that's not canon at all, because it was during a time where they're like, we have nothing else to do. Here's Star Wars holiday special. That's <laughs> exactly. what, that is where Boba Fett got in- introduced after Star Wars: A New Hope. Really? Which is interesting. They introduced Kashyyyk, which is eventually became obviously Wookie. Chewbacca's home planet, yeah, the Wookiee home island. planet. Not the island, it's the planet. That's okay. <laughs> but when Star Wars Legends happened, when the Le- Star Wars Legends came to fruition, that became part of non-canon. But Lumpy is back. Oh my god! Because in the recent aftermath, Empire's End by Chuck Wending, he brought back Chewbacca's son. In the book, it says he has a son who went by Lumpy, and his wife Mala had a name called Lumparoopa, which is close enough to Lumpy. So there you go. Boom. There's your three characters that survived Legends Hell. Why you gotta name him Lumpy? I know, right? (laughs) Buddy, I want you to Google something real quick. Yes. I want you to Google Captain Rex. Yes. Return of the Jedi. Oh, he's not in Return of the Jedi. So, Captain Rex is, <laughs> is a character in Star Wars The Clone Wars, the animated series. Captain Rex is my man. And But people believe that he pops up technically in Re- Return of the Jedi because there's a character who's bearded. Just like him. That could technically look like him. Oh, that's Captain so Rex. In, Re- <laughs> in Return of the Jedi, there's this old man rebel soldier who goes by the name of Gramps, member of the Rebel Alliance, but he was seen disguised as a scout trooper trying to infiltrate the Empire. In the capture scene towards the end of the movie, and people are believing he is Captain Rex, so they can have Captain Rex in the movie. Yeah, yeah. So retcon, which is something that people are trying to do, is when fans try to say, "Oh, this was set up the whole time." Boom, you're good. <laughs> retcon is sort of placing, making the connection when no one has officially made the connection. 
Think of um, suddenly in Spider-Man 3, Sandman killed Uncle Ben and not that guy that actually shot him. Yes, away. Sandman didn't kill Uncle Ben. It was the <laughs> random guy that ran away. <laughs> Man. Why do we ca- keep bringing up Uncle Ben? I'm still hurt. Do you have an Uncle Ben? Is that why? No. Do we need to talk? Yeah. About your Uncle Ben? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but happy Star Wars Day. And But before we go, we obviously got to talk about our favorite shows. Right, Javi? Yes. What is our favorite shows? Oh, this is DC check-in, isn't it? Yes, it's time for the DC <laughs> check-in! Yes! It got real excited. Kevin, say check! Check! There we go. Check! I'm we sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he got so excited! <laughs> Ooh, now it's Commander Cody. Oh, man, this is such a good movie. Um, so, this week, DC Supergirl happened. Kevin, did you watch it? No, I didn't. But apparently, she uh, Supergirl's sister, who yes. is... What's her name? Oh, my gosh, what's her name? It's not, oh my gosh, what's her name? It's Sally, right? I see her face right now. Is she's it a- Alex? Alex, yes. Oh, oh man, how did I know that? I don't even watch Supergirl, girl. <laughs> I don't even watch the show. Mm. Yeah. Alex Danvers. Yeah, I don't think she made Come it. Come on, man. We both know this and you don't. Do your homework. I don't think she made we it. We got she, you. Did she, did she make it? I don't know. I didn't watch that. <laughs> yeah. I saw the description for it and I was like, oh my, I don't think she's going to make it. But. And this week, I decided to watch Arrow, and Kevin didn't because he had baby problems with poop all over his face. Yeah. And that's okay. Oh. No, no, over her, her back and her neck. And, and then, my neck. My, my back. back. But in a weird way because it. it's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided what I have. I decided that my, my Wednesday is over. I'm going to sleep. I hate Wednesdays. Kevin is the Garfield of Wednesdays. I hate Wednesdays. Where's my lasagna? He saw the poop on the back and the neck. He's like, all right, I'm out. over. I'm, I'm out. Done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that happened. Kevin, like we said, Arrow was all right. You, you could miss it. It's okay. It was, apparently, it was the worst ra- rated episode of the season. Which, uh, Well, that's good considering how bad season five was. That we, we got to this point and got to the worst episode instead of being the whole season. Mm. This is that bad. But apparently, <laughs> uh, Ollie and Felicity are trapped in the Arrow Cave, which is kind of cool. And... Apparently an EMP went off, but what I completely forgot, and Kevin, you probably forgot too if you would watch the episode, is that Felicity has an implant in her back that makes oh, her walk. Oh, yeah, she does. And the whole time, I was like, why didn't she? Oh, yeah, season four. That's right. She lost her legs. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, so the whole time, Oliver, Stephen Amell, is carrying dead weight known as Felicity Smoke through the Arrow Cave. They eventually survive. <laughs> but the cool thing is, and that's why I wanted to talk about Arrow, is that when I, Javi and I interviewed David Ramsey at FanFest in Chicago, we mentioned a scene where he said in a future episode, the the relationship between Lila and his character Diggle would be brought up. Yeah. And boom, this is the episode they'd bring up about issues. So I was like, we had a sneak peek. Thanks, David Ramsey. Thank best you. Best friend. <laughs> Thanks, David Ramsey. Podcast best friend. <laughs> Man. Mm. David Ramsey, my boy. I like you. Diggle's awesome. Diggle's awesome. Hopefully, the episode ends with Prometheus finding Ollie's son, William. So hopefully, it'll ramp up a little bit. Because oh there's only gosh. three three ish more episodes of that, yeah. too. Because there's doing stuff for Flash also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and I'm probably like... Supergirl as well. Yeah. And then we'll get to Flash, which Kevin watched. Yes. So good for you, Kevin. You watched it late. But that's okay, because you had Guardians. I had Guardians. I, I was trying to watch it at the same time, but I think they wouldn't let me. <laughs> hey, can I watch? I'm not, I'm not filming. I'm watching The Flash. <laughs> Illegally. Hey, can I'm I get filming. a Wi-Fi password? <laughs> <laughs> can you pause the movie? What's the Wi-Fi, fam? Flash <laughs> is on. Put it on commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but, Kevin, I want you to tell us who is Savitar. Actually, hold on. Javi, you tell us who Savitar who's is. Who's Savitar, Javi? Savitar is a character in the show no. who's bad. Who did they reveal who Savitar is, <laughs> Javi? Oh, it's, um... <gasps> we'll see if Javi looks at our tweets. Yeah, something about Killer Frost and... Nope, no, not oh, Killer uh, Frost. Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nope. No, I, uh, all right. <laughs> Man, I saw, like, so you get those good, n- those good nuggets <laughs> are on, at infinite underscore pods where we tweet about Mr. Freeze being Killer Darth Frost's Vader? dad. No. We have a six-hour flight in a month. You need to watch everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, Kevin, Kevin and I play Mario Kart. So. <laughs> no, I want to play Mario Kart. So, Kevin, Kart. who is Savitar? First, I want to say I called this last spoiler month. Spoiler warning right now. Spoiler, spoiler warning. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. That Kevin three, called two, three months. One, who is it? Future Flash. Bum, bum, bum. It's Barry from the future. Uh-oh. Future Barry. Ba- Barry? Barry, Future Barry. So Kevin called it. I was wrong. They threw us off. Every time. Yeah. It was Barry from the future who has a bird on his mark. But we're not sure what future. For me, I thought you thought it was going to be Joe for some reason. I don't know why. I thought it was going to be Ronnie. I thought it was going to be Mr. Freeze. I can't believe it's not Butter. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was Mr. Freeze? That'd been pretty cool, actually. I've been like, wait, what? Like, that wait, doesn't I, make sense at all. 
How? Mr. Freeze isn't your villain. He's Batman's villain. <laughs> but I, it's cool. Um, I've noticed this and I actually talked to Mr. Eric V the other day about this was that every time they tried to say, oh, who Savitar was, they would play a different character's theme or a different show's theme to throw you off. Yeah. So last week they played the Legends of Tomorrow theme when Savitar revealed himself to Caitlin Snow, Killer Frost. And I was like, oh, it's Gabby Ronnie. That makes sense so much. This week they played when he actually revealed him, it was Barry's theme song, which is the. Bah! Yeah, exactly. Bah, bah. So every week they play a different theme song. Like, man, who is it? They did a good job musically with that reveal, which is hmm. cool. I thought in the beginning, actually, when they first first uh, show Savitar, I thought it was gonna be Jay Garrick again, another uh. Jay Garrick. But then at the, at the at, as they keep going, they kept saying, "I know everything, I know everything." I'm like, it's gotta be Barry. Mm-hmm. If he knows everything that happens because he already did it, that means he already lived his life before. That means it has to be Barry. Hey, hey. 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 Yeah, like. All right, sorry, continue. But yeah, but after a while, I just thought, of, like, it has to be Barry because he actually is in front. He knows every step he's going to take. He, like, he's already been through this life before. Like, it's Barry. It has to be Barry. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how he got, got, the, got those scars, though. Yes, he got scars on his face. Well, scars no, on his scars. body. But the cool thing is, is that they didn't tell you what future he's from. So I was thinking that what explains everything is that this Barry thinks himself as the good guy. That he's going back in time to stop... The, the the present Flash yeah from committing more time travel issues which is causing all this stuff to go bad yeah that's a good point and so because in the comics that's why Future Flash comes back and he's a villain because he's like you need to stop this but in his mind it's like I'm doing the right thing but the present Barry it looks like he's doing the wrong thing yeah right. mm. do you think we see that another like nexus point of Barry going back to his mom's death again probably that's every season <laughs> third time in a row let's do it <laughs> yeah I'm excited to see what happens in the last couple episodes because apparently next week they're gonna try to they're gonna try to wipe his memory. Mm. It'll be interesting. Three more episodes, three more weeks of that, and then we have to figure out. Oh, Game of Thrones. Oh no, we'll have like a month break. Then Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Then Javi can join in. Well, the the see instead of called DC checking, it'll be called talking the throne. Ooh. Instead of taking the throne, it'll be talking the throne. Could be oh. could be watching the throne. Watch. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. ooh. We got, we well, got, well, we got a month. We got two we got, months to figure that out. <laughs> We've got two <laughs> But you know what, Javi? Our blue milk bet is still waiting for us. All right. I can't yeah, wait. Have fun with that. Make sure you follow at infinite underscore pause and use the hashtag crisis crew when you tweet at us so we make sure you get followed. We want to be the voice of you, the voice of the nerdiness because you matter to us. Yeah, we're yeah. going gonna to watch Obi-Wan Kenobi kill General. You know, you General can literally Reeves. watch Star Wars with us right now if you wanted to. Just put on a TBS TV station, whatever that is. <laughs> But oh, make sure Obi-Wan. you follow us. We have lots of great content for Star Wars Day today. Yeah. Um, also, have a great week. Guardians of the Galaxy, go see that. Go see it. We love you. Cut we love you. Off, Obi-Wan. My name is Hoodie. I'm Kevin. And I am Javi. Make sure you follow at Infinite underscore pods. Like I said, again, give us a rating and a like on iHeartRadio and iTunes and YouTube and everywhere else you find it because we're on that and because we want to shout you out as a YouTube subscriber. If you subscribe us, we're up to 25 now, guys. <laughs> we're getting there. Woo! But you just listened to the Star Wars Spectacular Special, the 28th episode of Crisis Crisis on Infinite Podcast. Podcast.